<coughs> it's been a little bit of time since I've filmed the original segment of this, about a month, but I've had a lot of things going on. We're now on my back deck where we will be working on uh, testing the antenna and showing you how to connect up the final little piece there. A few things you're going to need. You should have a uh, SWR tester or SWR bridge tester. Mine doesn't have frequency counter size, but it's frequency counter with it. Mine's an old one, but it still functions just fine. Uh, you will need a radio to test with as well. Uh, and for this, you need to be a ham radio operator and licensed. Uh, you will need flex. a dummy load. This is an antenna simulator. It doesn't allow transmission outside of its short area, but it uh, it simulates a perfect antenna for testing all the rest of the equipment for them to test the antenna. Okay. I also want to show you a piece of ladder line. This is ladder line. Okay. Ladder line is just twin lead. You might remember this is like the old 300 ohm twin lead that came down from a UHF antenna if you grew up like I did without cable. <laughs> Although I had cable later on, but but these came down off the antenna and it was a smaller piece, you know, smaller distance between the thing, but this is basically just twin lead. This is 450 ohm ladder line and that means 450 ohms of resistance to the flow of AC current. Um, and we'll go into that later on. I do a video on basic electronics, but Okay, we'll need some adapter pieces to hook the radio to the antenna, the blowtorch. We will need tape measure and the connecting piece of coax to hook to the antenna that we actually have, or that I have. Uh, I need to stand outside and it's a little bit warmer today than I thought it would be, but it's not too bad. So. Also want to show you guys an antenna that my test antenna that I built to test out the entire thing with, which is this one. <laughs> and even though I miscut this, it was too short, I added a piece on there, and that's how much you can really mess one of these things up and still make it work. But the antenna, and you notice this is shorter than the one we made, but the antenna itself works just fine. So let me show you the antenna as it sits in the yard right now with nothing hooked to it. Okay, so you notice I have the antenna sitting on a tripod. We'll zoom in and I've just clamped this onto this pipe, this tripod pipe with <laughs> just squeeze clamps. And that's the antenna. Okay. So we're not going to show you how to do just a simple calibration on everything to make sure it all works. Get the things out of the way here. Uh, so we'll take our dummy load, which is basically just a 50 ohm resistor. So it's easy enough to do. We'll use our basically this thing, which is an SWR analyzer uh, by MFJ. All it actually does is generate the frequency and then tells you whether or not you have. A higher low SWR. Now, in more advanced models give you a lot more information, but this is kind of an old one and I've had this for a while. Okay. Frequency counter to tell us more accurately where this thing's at because it just has a sweep. Now you see this here. Okay. So, I'm going to hook, I know this is good, and I know this works, so I'm going to test the coax, and yeah, I know I shouldn't have it in a loop like this, but for the simple test I'm doing, this should be fine. I'm going to hook this to here, hook the other end to here, and we're going to make sure that the antenna coax is good. That's an older piece of coax I've had sitting around, so I'm going to turn on the, the frequency counter and set the gate speed to fast. Turn on the unit. I'm going to set it for 146 as close as I can do, which is that. Let's get to where you can see it. 
Okay. Now, if you look, you notice the SWR is zero. And it is on. Light bulb's on. And this is for you out. That's the frequency, which is just about 146. So even if I sweep this frequency, okay, I'm going to sweep the frequency, and you'll notice it stays at zero the whole time. And that's good. But So if I sweep the frequency here, I get that. So I want 140. Six point oh as close as I can get it. Yeah, maybe. Okay, so that's that's kind of what it reads there, and that's what it reads. So this coax here is just fine. Okay, and we know the demula is good, and that works. So that's how we test that part. Okay, next we're going to hook it to our analyzer here. So, on the end here, let's screw that in as I get attacked by mosquitoes. Love Indiana. I'm going to turn on our frequency counter, set it to fast gate speed. We're going to adjust the frequency here. Take it down to one. Forty-six. That's close I can get it anyway. Okay, and then we look at our... Now, you notice, as I blow away mosquitoes, that the SWR zeroes right there. And that's at that frequency. Okay, well, we want it actually at 146. Oops, it. Okay, now that's basically giving us a 1.5 to 1 SWR, and all I did was tack that at the point that we initially measured. So I'm going to show you how to adjust this distance here. Now I just tacked it on. This is the grounding side. This is the the hot side or the feed side, the center because it's center pin on the coax if you want. Okay, so we're going to light our torch. And just get that little. You can see it or not against that. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to move this that way a little bit. I'm shrinking this gap this way, just a little. This is going to make things really hot, so you got to use pliers. Now what I'm going to do is heat it here and scoot it there. You don't heat the actual, you don't actually heat the, the solder joint itself because it will burn it. It's electrical solder, remember, so... I heat that from underneath, and then I'm going to grab this and scoot it down a little bit. So, as you can see, it's getting hot there. Okay, see the torch in? You put it on there, you'll see this change colors a little bit right there. And eventually, you'll see this kind of work its way loose. You will get some smoke, and that's okay. So I'm going to scoot it down to about there. And then it hardens up pretty quick. And we'll turn off our torch. Now, word of warning, this is insanely hot right here right now. It's not hot enough to melt solder now. It's solid. But it is crazy, crazy, crazy hot. Most definitely, at least for the next 30 or 40 seconds after you're done, if not a little bit longer, you could most certainly light a match off of it. So what I've done is I've made this 
and the reason I went in instead of out because if you notice where it actually centered at was a lower frequency lower frequency is a bigger thing remember the original number so if you divide like 234 by a larger number higher frequency number things get smaller remember the division thing so a lower frequency gets bigger so this was just too big I needed to raise the frequency a little bit so I just brought it in not much about a sixteenth or an eighth of an inch or so. I'm going to hook my antenna up here. So, back to that. Okay. I'll turn on my handy dandy frequency counter and then turn on the analyzer itself. That's the Allen switch is there in case you're curious. So 144, basically in there we've got almost zero, and it goes up at 148, it's 1.7. So it's still a little bit long, but at 146 now, it's now like a 1.4. And if you go down to like a 145 band, you get down to 142 which is uh, like the lower Peter band, it's in there 1.2. Okay, so that's how you want to adjust this to get kind of the thing that you want. Keep in mind, this antenna, I'll put the entire cost up there, the whole thing was less than $50. So that's not too bad. Another way to put this on here is if you have a connector, if you just use coax, you could use hose clamps to temporarily hold it in place and then slide it up and down without having to torch it each time. So the way to do it. I just wanted to do it this way because, well, honestly, I need to make it for my ham code meeting, which I just demonstrated it to this week. Next thing is to show you how much it actually does work. So I went and got all the coax and hooked the antenna uh, to the coax and got it all the way up here. So we'll plug this into our, I believe it's called Oshin. It's pronounced or it's spelled W O U X U N. That's Chinese radio. Okay. So this will be testing low power. Hook to the antenna, uh, keying up the low power repeater, which is pretty simple even on a rubber duck antenna, but it gives you an idea how how much it functions. Testing. So, key it up again. It brings up the 7.3 repeater, which is a local repeater. So let's move to... Unlock. <laughs> the lady telling me she's unlocked. So let's move to 6.6.4. Actually, here's the 664 repeater. You might uh, check out your phone. Also, full scale. Uh, ring and ring, but nobody answered it. Okay. I, uh, I try to keep my cell phone charged up. Okay, so we're obviously hearing them pretty well. So we hear them pretty well. And they're actually about, eh, I think around 20 miles from here. And it's full scale. Okay, so this repeater is about 30 miles away from here. Testing. You testing. Yeah. So the antenna itself actually works pretty well. And keep in mind, I'm doing this with this thing right there you can see it uh, ish maybe low <laughs> it's putting out about a half a watt even at a half watt I'm able to hit repeaters 30 miles away on a handheld so it's not a bad antenna